been so widely used that its meaning has been neutralized and is now part of our vocabulary along with good morning or hello. Hell is widely known as a place of punishment for the ungodly, but during the last century, the word hell has become a casual, misused and misunderstood word that has become less serious than its implications. Parker, then I'll see you in hell. When hell freezes over this way. And I'll see you in hell, Teddy. I'll see you in hell with your money. At my signal, unleash hell. After five years in hell, I returned home with only one truth. If you're going through hell, I keep through hell for you. Till then, give heaven some hell. The world's idea of Satan, or the devil, is a beast with a pitchfork and a long tail, with an evil expression on his face, often a creature colored in red. But in reality, Satan, or his original created name, Lucifer, was created by God to be the most beautiful angel that ever existed. Ezekiel 28:12, you were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Does Satan rule hell? No, Satan rules the earth. How did this happen? Lucifer was created to be the most powerful angel, the head of all angels. Lucifer was given the ability to choose, just like us. He wanted to ascend from his exalted position even higher into a position of equality with God. When Lucifer rebelled against God, he became Satan, which means adversary. God cast Satan and his angels that followed him out of heaven to earth. Satan took with him to earth when he was cast out, one third of all the angels. Revelation 12:4. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. God's angels have at least a hundred million at present. Revelation 5, 11. 10,000 times 10,000 their number. So that means there are at least 50 million fallen angels here on earth. Fallen angels are called demons. Revelation 12, 9, the great dragon was cast out, that ancient serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast down to the earth, and his angels were cast down with him. Satan is not omnipresent like God, but he and his fallen angels are not limited by space. Satan has two realms of power, the air and the world. Ephesians 2, 1 through 2. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live, following the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, the unbelieving, who fight against the purposes of God. The air is anywhere that is above the ground, where Satan and his demons are free to move around, invisible to us, but we are not invisible to them. Do it now. Take it. Second 
2 Corinthians 4, 4. The ruler of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They cannot see the light of the good news, the message about the divine greatness of Jesus Christ. Christ is the one who is exactly like God. Satan and his demons are allowed to control unbelievers and animals by entering their body and or they're allowed to influence believers in their thoughts by turning them away from their faith in God or the truth about God. Satan and his demons believe in God, as seen in this passage, where a man who was possessed by demons is talking to Jesus. Mark 1, 24. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. So let's sum this up. 50 million demons and Satan himself are roaming around in the world right now, and their only goal is to deprive you of who God is. Revelation 12, 17. Helpless with rage, the dragon raged at the woman, then went off to make war with the rest of her children, the children who keep God's commands and hold firm to the witness of Jesus. Peter 5 8 keep a cool head stay alert the devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping keep your guard up you're not the only ones plunged into these hard times it's the same with Christians all over the world so keep a firm grip on the faith what are some of the lies that Satan and his demons are saying to people today Tell him that you hate him. You are better than your parents. Talk to your mother while he's asleep. Your wife will never know. Do this. Leave your spouse. Don't get into trouble if you lie. Steal it! Everyone's doing it! Do it! Do it. Get revenge! Get revenge! When you're proud, God didn't create humans. There, there is no God. God. There is there is no God. God. Worshipping God interferes with your sports days. Everyone goes to heaven. Everyone goes to heaven. Who sees what you do in secret? A loving God would not create hell. Some people think that they can pray for someone's soul and get them into heaven after their death on earth. But there are no second chances and there is no more forgiveness. Also, many people have referred to hell as a place where they will be able to greet all their friends or that hell will be one big party. Unfortunately, this is far from the truth as the Bible clearly says that they will be in torment in hell. All the people before the resurrection of Jesus that followed God's direction and all the people that became Christians after the resurrection of Jesus have been carried to heaven where they are living with God. But before the resurrection of Jesus, the dead went to a place called Hades, which had two realms separated by an invisible barrier where sound and sight between the two realms were permitted.
The dead that followed God's laws when they were alive were above the barrier, living in comfort, and the unbelievers and those who did not follow God's laws were below the barrier, living in torment. Luke 16, 22 through 24. Then he died, this poor man, and was taken up by the angels to the lap of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades and in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham in the distance and Lazarus in his lap. He called out, Father Abraham, mercy, have mercy. Send Lazarus to dip his finger in water to cool my tongue. I'm in agony in this fire. Luke 16, 25 through 26. But Abraham said, Child, remember that in your lifetime you got the good things and Lazarus the bad things. It's not like that here. Here he's consoled and you're tormented. Besides, in all these matters, there is a huge chasm set between us so that no one can go from us to you, even if he wanted to, nor can anyone cross over from you to us. Hades translated to English is hell. Now after the resurrection of Jesus, only the unbelievers that have not asked Jesus for forgiveness are in hell after their death on earth. So if you died today, your bodily soul would be sent to hell with no escape. Will you be tortured by demons in hell? Satan and his demons will have the same fate as anyone who has not asked for forgiveness through Jesus. There will be no end to the torment of fire. Revelation 20.10 And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. But what is the lake of fire? Is that different from hell? Unfortunately, yes. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne and God who was seated on it. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to their works as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one by his works. Then death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What does this passage really mean? God will recreate the original bodies of all non-Christians and unbelievers who did not follow God's laws before and after the resurrection of Jesus. Those who died at sea, those who have been buried in the grave or cremated since the beginning of creation and unite them with their spirits or souls of their present bodily forms where they are in torment in hell. They will all exit hell and stand before God's great white throne on Judgment Day. The persons to be judged are the dead, small and great, young and old, infamous and famous, poor and rich, the age that you become self-aware of the reality of life and death, and the idea of a loving God that will judge you upon your death, even when you are young, must implore you to seek the truth of your sure reality after your death on earth. God knows, as well as you know yourself, the age that you became aware of understanding life and death, usually around the age of 12.
Luke 2, 41 through 46. Every year, Jesus' parents traveled to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up as they always did for the feast. When it was over and they left for home, the child Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents didn't know it. The next day, they found him in the temple, seated among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. Even Jesus says that you will have a chance to say something about the kind of life you lived. Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name? Here are some of your reasons you will use. But I was a member of a church. I was a leader of a nation. I had a million followers. I was a representative of my country. I gave away half my income. I volunteered at homeless shelters. I read the Bible a lot. I was a good person. I, I didn't commit any crimes. I was famous. I sing in the choir. D doesn't that count? I was concerned about the environment. My parents told me that I was baptized when I was a baby. I wore a necklace with a cross on it my whole life. I was told that you were not the Messiah. And Jesus might say, the Old Testament in the Bible contains over 200 prophecies about me that have been confirmed in the New Testament, that I would come from the line of King David, I would be born from a virgin, I would heal the sick and the blind would see, I would be given the authority to forgive sins, I would be nailed on a cross, I would be crucified with two criminals, my blood would cover for the forgiveness of sins, and my resurrection from death gave the promise of eternal life for those who accepted me as their savior. If just eight of these 200 prophecies were true, the odds of this being me were one in a hundred quadrillion. Yet you would still not believe because you didn't want to love your neighbor. You wanted a Messiah who was a conqueror so you could rule your neighbor. I would have been socially rejected or persecuted. Matthew 10, And Jesus will say, but the one who denies and rejects me before men and women, that one I will also deny and reject before my Father who is in heaven. But I, I believed in you. And Jesus might say, yes, you believed in me. But Satan, the devil, he also believes in me. And just believing is not enough. You never asked me to forgive you of your sins. And you never wanted me to help you bring focus to your life. You wanted to do things your way, not my way. So this is why you will be cast into the lake of fire.
but I, I prayed to your mother Mary every day. But Jesus might say, the Bible says that only through me can you be forgiven with the promise of eternal life. Only through me are your sins forgiven. No one else has been given this authority. It is written more than 90 times in the New Testament that I alone am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Acts 4, 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men and women by which we must be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. John 3, 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. But I really didn't know that you existed. And Jesus could say, do you think ignorance of the law is an excuse? I gave you a conscience that instructs you on what is right and wrong. You passed by many churches and you didn't ask about me. You've used my name inappropriately. I created the world and an entire galaxy around you. How could you not wonder about me? You heard about me several times in your life, but you did not seek the truth. I gave you a mind so you could reject peer pressure. The Bible has been written in a language that you can understand. Over six billion Bibles printed. 1,185 languages have been translated. I rose from the dead to prove that I am God. And I gave you free will, but you chose the world over me. If a police officer tells you that you've broken a law, and you tell the officer that you were unaware of the violation, do you think that your ignorance will get you out of a ticket? The officer will tell you that your ignorance is no excuse for you not knowing what the laws are. But I'm not even old enough to drive. I'm only 12. And Jesus might say, I know that your life was cut short, but no one knows the hour of their death, which is why you should have been prepared. Psalm 115, 17 says, The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any who go down into silence. You knew the difference between life and death for some time, and you heard my name mentioned many times, but you did not ask for forgiveness. You chose silence. For I am not pleased with the death of anyone who dies, says the Lord God. So be sorry for your sins and turn away from them and live. Ezekiel 18, 32. The lake of fire will be in darkness and it will last forever.
Matthew 8, 11 through 12. I tell you, many will come from the east and west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into utter darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Revelation 21, 8. But those who are cowards, those who refuse to believe, those who do terrible things, those who kill, those who sin sexually, those who do evil magic, those who worship idols, and those who tell lies, they will all have a place in the lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Matthew 13, 50. The angels will throw the evil people into the blazing furnace, where people will cry and grind their teeth with pain. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 2 Thessalonians 1, 9. Those people will be punished with the destruction that continues forever, separated from the presence of the Lord and from His great power. and non-believers find this hard to understand because they consider it excessive for a God of love to send people to hell forever. After all, they reason, how can 70 or 80 years of sin merit an eternity of torment? If your eternal destiny were a matter of counterbalancing your bad deeds with good, these questions might have some merit. But how can you repay God with good deeds after you're dead? God is testing you every day to see if you can follow his example of living right. God sent his son, Jesus, to show us how to live and love each other. But God gives everyone free will to make this choice while they're alive. That's why hell and the lake of fire exist, because we failed to accept Jesus as our savior. It's that simple. Don't erase your chance. Hear the words from Matthew 10, 28. Don't be bluffed into silence by the threats of bullies. There's nothing they can do to your soul, your core being. Save your fear for God, who holds your entire life, body, and soul in His hands. Don't be afraid of people. They can kill the body, but they cannot kill the soul. The only one you should fear is God, the one who can send the body and the soul to be destroyed in hell. The day of judgment will be nothing like our modern court cases. At God's throne, God will be the judge, but no jury. A prosecution, but no defense. A sentence, but no appeal. No one will be able to defend oneself or accuse God of unrighteousness. How many times will you deny Jesus? Where will you be standing? Christians will not be in this line. Everyone who has accepted Jesus as their savior and asked for his forgiveness will be instantly with Jesus upon your death on earth. On the day of judgment before God, your name will appear in the book of life and you will not be judged even though we are just as guilty. John 3, 18, the one who believes in him is not judged, but the one who does not believe has already been judged because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. After your death on earth, you will be judged by God who has detailed records and 24-7 video surveillance of every thought, action, and sin you have acted upon, said, and even thought of. And if you've never asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, your judgment will be hell, a lake of fire with no end of torment.
Jesus did not promise an easy life for everyone who believes in him, but he did promise that you would be given the Holy Spirit to act as a friend, a teacher, and a guide in your life if you believe and trust in him, and that you will live eternally with him in heaven after your death on earth. Friend, if you would like to receive the promise of eternal life in heaven, just say, Jesus, I do not know you, but my conscience is telling me that you really came to earth in order to teach us how to love each other and that you shed your blood to cover for my sins, my lies, and my ego, where I thought I was in charge of my own destiny. I want to know and learn more about you, so I'm asking for your forgiveness. I know it will not be easy for me to let everything I thought I was in control of over to you, but I'm willing to ask for your help and guidance so I can have the promise of eternal life in heaven. Please send the Holy Spirit to me to show me how I should be living. Please give me the strength, courage, and self-control to change my destiny forever. If you have said this prayer and you have really meant it, then you are now sealed with the Holy Spirit forever as a believer in Jesus. But don't think that you can now go back to your old life and habits just because you said a quick prayer. Remember, God knows your mind and heart. Like it says in 1 Corinthians 15 too, it is this good news that saves you if you still firmly believe it. Unless, of course, you never really believed it in the first place. You have to be willing to submit to God on a daily basis for His guidance and direction in your new life. I know this is a lot to take in, and there is a lot more detailed information I want you to know. So here's what's going to help you learn more about God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Watch these short videos that will help explain your understanding of why the blood of Jesus is so important for covering our sins, how Jesus' resurrection guarantees eternal life in heaven for all of those who've asked Him to be their Savior, and the friend and helper that Jesus left behind for us to draw power and wisdom from, the Holy Spirit. Part 1. Death. Why did Jesus shed His blood? Part 2. Life. An invitation to life and Jesus' resurrection. And part three, Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Another video, Does God Exist, offers a broader look at Jesus' birth, life, and resurrection. Just click on this icon on your left if you're on YouTube, or click on the catalog menu for a complete list of videos if you are on our website. These videos will explain everything you need to know to change your life forever.